Located on Ross Island, at the edge of the Ross Ice Shelf, Mount Erebus is the world's southernmost active volcano. This 12,447-foot stratovolcano shares the island with the largest base in Antarctica, McMurdo Station. The station is a remote outpost that houses over 1,000 people during the summer months. All of the scientists who work on the volcano must plan and prepare before going into the field. To reach the top of Erebus from McMurdo, you need warm clothing, plenty of food and water, and a helicopter. It's a 15-minute flight up 9,000 feet to the Fang Ridge. Altitude sickness can be a serious problem in this remote setting. Everyone must spend two to three days acclimatizing at the Fang Camp before moving up to the Lower Erebus Hut. Fang Ridge is part of what still remains of an ancient caldera that was once the top of the volcano. The Scott tents used to make the camp are pretty comfortable with a full assortment of cooking equipment and food and plenty of time to relax and share some company. Okay, so here we are on the Fang Ridge uh, at Mount Erebus. It's December 5th. It's about 10 o'clock in the evening right now and uh, the temperature has been very mild today for the most part. The breeze is just uh, slight coming, uh, but as you can see the ice fog has sort of moved in, the clouds have come down, and it's not quite as sunny as it was earlier in the day. It's, uh, it's a pretty neat place to be. We're spinning. There is plenty of room at the hut to live and work. Research has been conducted at this site for over 30 years. Of course, evening is the time to relax after a long cold day outside. Then it's off to your tent to sleep before another full day begins tomorrow. The experimental goal this season was to create seismic images of the volcano's interior. To get the job done, we divided the work into three parts. Our first task 
was to deploy the seismometers. 80 units were installed in a grid pattern around the crater. Each unit was equipped with solar panels and a GPS unit. Then eight holes needed to be drilled into solid ice so that the explosive charges could put enough energy in the ground to record. Having the right kind of ice is very important if you want your data to come out properly. Once the holes were packed, it was time to start the shaking. John and I have just driven up. It's uh, half past seven at night. It's actually dinner time and our dinner's going to get burnt. But, um, We've driven round to the south east corner of Erebus as far as we can get before it drops off steeply to the sea and the sea ice. From this point here we have everything you could ever want apart from people, which isn't such a bad thing. We've got mountains and glaciers, rocks, volcanoes, blue sky, we've got the Ross Ice Shelf out in this direction, we've got the Murdo Station in this direction, We've got everything you could ever want and uh, we're the only people for a long way and uh, we are very, very lucky. Beautiful sight and Tommy's loving it, aren't you Tommy? The seismometers were then collected and made ready for the long trip down the mountain and back to New Mexico Tech. The data will be analyzed and an image constructed over the next two years. Other ongoing studies include measuring the lava material that has been thrown up out of the crater and onto the rim. These pieces are known as volcanic bombs. Hey, John. Yeah. Researchers also continue to monitor the gases coming from the crater. Phenomenal. Being on top of an active volcano is something that you never forget. Mount Erebus is one of only three active volcanoes in the world that maintains a lava lake. I don't know what to say. This is just fantastic. We're sitting here at the top of Mount Erebus, walking around the crater tonight, and it is the most spectacular, breathtaking scenery I've ever seen in my life. And I, I'm just, uh, I wish everybody could just see this and experience this just for a few minutes. The mountain has developed many ice caves around the hot gases escaping from side vents. They are all different, all dangerous, but they are all beautiful.
Yeah. Alright, here we are at the Lower Amazon. We're at 3,270 meters. It's about minus 30 degrees Celsius, blowing about 30 miles an hour. It makes for a wind chill of approximately minus 65 degrees Celsius. If I stand out here for too long, I'll get frostbite on my face. Behind me are our tents. They're holding up well in the weather. We are just about done with the project. All the seismometers are out, which is good, because we cannot work in this weather. So today, taking a day off, we're fixing our gear, we're eating lots of food, drinking hot drinks, and staying warm the best we can. It's great out here. Come to Antarctica. Woo! I'm really excited about <laughs> 